Good morning and thank you for joining us for morning prayer. My name is Jenny Burgoyne and I'm a parish minister in the parish of St Paul's Parkhurst. Let us just take a few minutes out of our schedule on this Friday morning to praise and worship God. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open up our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us consider these last few days and call to mind the things that we have done that we know are wrong and the right things that we could have done and didn't. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. The appointed psalm this morning is Psalm 11. Psalm 11. In the Lord I have found my refuge. How then can you say to me, Flee like a bird to the mountains. Look how the wicked bend their bows and notch the arrow upon the string and shoot from the darkness at the truth of heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the just man do? The Lord is in his holy place. The Lord is enthroned in heaven. His eyes search out, his his glance tries the children of men. He tries the righteous and the wicked, and him that delights in violence, his son abhors. He will rain down coals of fire and brimstone upon the wicked. A scorching wind shall be their cup to drink. For the Lord is righteous and loves righteous acts. The upright shall see his face. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for evermore. The first lesson this morning is written in Ezekiel, and I'm reading from chapter 16, verses 1 to 15, and verses 59 to 63. The word of God came to me, Son of man, confront Jerusalem with her detestable practices and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says to Jerusalem. Your ancestry and birth were in the land of the Canaanites, and your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. On the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in cloths. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field, for on the day you were born, you were despised. Then I passed by and saw you kicking about in your blood, and as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, Live! I made you grow like a plant of the field. You grew up and developed and became the most beautiful of jewels. Your breasts were formed and your hair grew, you who were naked and bare. Later I passed by, and when I looked at you and saw that you were old enough for love, I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your nakedness. I gave you my solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you, declares the Sovereign Lord, and you became mine. I bathed you with water 
and washed the blood from you and put ointments on you. I clothed you with an embroidered dress and put leather sandals on you. I dressed you in fine linen and covered you with costly garments. I adorned you with jewellery. I put bracelets on your arms and a necklace round your neck and I put a ring on your nose, earrings on your ears and a beautiful crown on your head. So you were adorned with gold and silver. Your clothes were fine linen and costly fabric and embroidered cloth. Your food was fine flour, honey and olive oil. You became very beautiful and rose to be a queen. And your fame spread among the nations on account of your beauty because the splendor I had given you made you your beauty perfect, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will deal with you as you deserve, because you have despised my oath by breaking the covenant. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Then you will remember your ways and be ashamed when you receive your sisters, both those who are older than you and those who are younger. I will give them to you as daughters, but not on the basis of my covenant with you. So I will establish my covenant with you and you will know that I am the Lord. Then when I make atonement for you, for all you have done, you will remember and be ashamed and never again open your mouth because of your humiliation, declares the Sovereign Lord. Here ends the first lesson. The second scripture reading is written in Matthew and I'm reading from Matthew chapter 19 and I'm reading verses 3 to 12. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. But it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, and marries another woman, commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If this is the situation between a husband and wife, is it better not to marry? Jesus replied, Not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it has been given. For some are eunuchs because they were born that way, others were made that way by men, and others have renounced marriage because of the kingdom of heaven. The one who can accept this should accept it. Here ends the second lesson. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live, live this day in love for you and one another through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May we live this day with thanksgiving in our souls, compassion in our hearts and kindness 
in our words and actions. Heavenly Father, we live in a world where we are so overcome with our own problems and how we can cope that we forget that our family, friends and acquaintances may be suffering too. Fill us with compassion for others and help us to see them as you do. Give us courage to assist them and see them through their trials. Let us do as you taught us and love our neighbour as ourselves. We pray this in your name. In this Woman's Month, we pray for all women around the world. Let them reach their full potential and put all their hopes and dreams in you. May they respect each other and support each other. Give them courage to speak and work for equality and justice and let them have compassion for each other. Almighty God, Father of us all, we ask you to inspire the people of this land with the spirit of justice, truth and love, so that in all our dealings with one another, we may show that together we are one in you, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Heavenly Father, your Son has promised that whenever we pray in his name, you will hear us answer our prayers, as may be best for us granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth and in the world to come the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. <laughs>